Hi, it's Becky with The Better Way to Homeschool. And I was on Facebook this morning and I was interacting with Holy Spirit-led homeschooling. And one of the readers had asked a question about math and math curriculum. And I hear this a lot when talking to new homeschoolers or frustrated homeschoolers. And so I wanted to make a video and put some information out on my blog to address it as well. Um, most homeschoolers, especially it seems like homeschoolers that are brand new or even have young kids, are concerned about what curriculum should I get to teach my kids. And while curriculum has its place and it's an, it can be an excellent tool, curriculum is not really what I believe is the most important thing when it comes to teaching math for your kids. Um, I have five boys. My oldest is now 20 and is a sophomore in college, and I have an incoming sophomore in high school, um, and then I have kids that are 11, 9, and almost 8. And what I've found over the years is that curriculum really doesn't matter. What really does matter is whether or not the kids have a fundamental understanding of their basic math facts. Can they add? Can they subtract? Can they multiply? Can they divide? Do they know those things inside out, backwards, forwards, without blinking? Um, if you were to have a game and you were to shout out those math facts, would they be shooting up their hands to give the answer, or would they be going to? Um, when you get into the higher grades, when you're teaching high school mathematics, say for instance you wanted to teach your kids the quadratic formula. Now I'd actually have to look in a book to remember how to use it, but if you're going to teach your kids how to use the quadratic formula, you don't want them counting on their fingers. You don't want them trying to break out a calculator to do the basic math. The math facts need to be, um, they need to know them inside out so that they don't, um, they don't spin their wheels, that it doesn't turn into a nightmare. So let me give you a few examples of what I'm talking about. I do use math curriculum. I've used Matthew C, I've used Saxon math, I've used Abeka math, I've used critical thinking math. Um, this last year I used from the critical thinking company, I used books called Mathematical Reasoning and their books, um, they tell you online what the levels are for grade level wise. And I love that they put a letter rather than a grade. So if you have, um, if you, well, they do have the grade as well, like this one's grade five, but it's more level F. And what I like about them is that they are critical thinking, geared, colorful, easy to do type pages. Short lessons, easy, easy to use. Even with my own kids, what I found when I was doing the critical thinking was that all three of my little ones still need to work on their math facts. So it's something that's always been a constant. Um, it's something that has to continually be renewed and revisited and to make sure that they stay greased and um, able to do their math facts quickly. So while you might choose something like this to work with your kids on a daily basis, um, this next year I'm actually switching to Saxon math and to give that a, to give that a try um, because what I want, the skill that I want to glean from, I'm going to set this down, the skill that I want to glean from Saxon this year is taking the math problems from a written page and then translating them onto another piece of paper. And yet, still, my fundamental goal in teaching math for my little guy all the way up to my sixth-ish grader is that I want them to know their math facts inside and out. Until they um, start to develop a love for mathematics, I'm really not interested in diving into all the deeper concepts mathematically. And I know people will disagree with me, um, but I think there's nothing more frustrating than not knowing your math facts. And veteran moms would be able to tell you that you can take a 13, 14, or 15 year old that knows their math facts. You can teach them their math concepts like this. But if you're working with a little guy who somebody somewhere has told you that a second grader should be able to do beginning algebra equations, and now you're sitting with your little one trying to explain that x plus 3 equals 7 and smoke starts to come out of their ears, um, I, I don't think it's worth that frustration. So anyway, this is what I'm talking about. Teaching your math facts to your kids. A teacher a long time ago introduced flashcards. These are multiplication. 
start with addition. These are multiplication flashcards that are shaped like a triangle. And the reason I like these math facts is it has the entire, this is an addition card, but if you look at it, it's also a subtraction card. It has the entire math family represented here. 9 plus 8 is 17, 8 plus 9 is 17, 17 minus 9 is 8, and 17 minus 8 is 9. And they're color-coded so that if we're playing hide-and-seek, you can tell me, well, what's missing? Or, what's missing? Or, what's missing? And the reason I love these math cards, these flashcards, is because, again, it has the entire math family. And your brain is this amazing pattern-seeking, purpose-detecting organ of the mind. Um, and it's always looking for connections. So I like that this has it complete. And these are put out by Trend, and they do have math fact families in um, addition and subtraction, and they also have multiplication and division fact families. And as you can see, these are a different color, um, so you can identify them, or your brain can pattern that when you're doing multiplication and division, here they are green and purple, but when you're doing addition and subtraction, you're doing blue and red. So I highly suggest some kind of flashcards. Um, they're easy to pack and take to the doctor's office. All of us seem to have smart devices these days. Um, I haven't figured out how to be able to tape a video and to be able to show you an app on my iPad at this point. I love um, their there are apps out there that are fantastic and on another day I can just do just a video of apps. Um, there's a bunch of them. I don't like to pay for them. The only app that I've paid for recently that I really like is called Splash Math and they have different grade levels and the kids can earn prizes and things on the game and my boys really really like it. So flashcards. You need some kind of flashcards. I don't have an example of them. When I was a little girl, um, we used to start our math classes with 50 or 100 count math drills, and it was an on your mark, get set, go, and I was very motivated by that, so I was that brat that would speed through and be the first one done, and boy, if you beat me, it made me mad. Um, but I knew my math facts inside and out because I drilled them every single day. And so I'm trying to develop that pattern with my own kids as well. So we do flashcards, we do do math drills, um, and then there are things that you can do that are not necessarily conventional. I get a lot of my homeschooling um, materials hand-me-down or um, where I'll get them at garage sales or um, co-op type swaps, that kind of thing. Um, this one I actually got recently in a kit from Macmillan McGraw Hill. It's filled with manipulatives, but I like this. If you can see it, it's a number line, which you can draw on paper and laminate yourself. And the reason a math line, a number line is good, it's really neat to be able to teach jumping math. So say you wanted your child to know um, 3 plus 7, but they didn't know that. They would start at 3 with the dry erase marker, and then they would count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3 plus 7 is 10. So this kind of a, a thing is good for kids to add and subtract. Another thing, my kids love dry erase boards. I have a big dry erase board in my kitchen dining room, which is where I do most of my homeschooling. We also have these mini whiteboards that I got at like a dollar store type thing. And these are good to practice math fact families. Now it's one thing to use a flashcard to learn your math facts. And that's good, a good visual. But if you see it and hear it and touch it in some way, you're going to you're going to learn it better. So whenever you're trying to teach something to your child, if the more senses that you can touch when you're doing that, the more they're going to master that thing. So with math facts, we're doing flashcards, we're doing number lines, we're doing writing our math fact families, sometimes on paper with a pencil. I do have a son that's very sensitive to the sound that a pencil makes on paper, so I've had to be more creative with ways that we can do fast drills that don't, he's got that sensory overload thing, kind of hurts his ears. So this one doesn't bother, but say you were doing a math fact family, say today you're working on multiplication and division, and say you were doing, I don't know, four times nine, or the 
four, nine, 30, 36 family. So your kids would practice, I don't know if you can see this, three, huh, you have to pay attention to your teacher, huh? Four times nine equals, then we, we could tell them 36. Well, if you know four times nine is 36, you already know three other facts. If you know this, then it has to be mathematically that 9 times 4 equals 36, too. Math is one of those black and white things. If this times this is this, then you can flip these numbers every single time and you'll always get the same answer. But there's another thing, too. It goes the other way. So if you already know 4 times 9 and 9 times 4, then you automatically know, my dry erase will cooperate, 36 divided by 9 has to be 4. And 36 divided by 4 has to be 9. Does that make sense? So that's a math fact family for multiplication and division. And the same would be true for a math fact family in addition. If you were doing 2 plus 9 equals 11, then you already know your other three facts. You already know 9 plus 2 is 11. You already know 11 minus 9 is 2. And you already know 11 minus 2 is 9. And the truth is, is that the black and white law-abiding nature of mathematics, once that opens to your kids, it really unlocks their ability to master these things, master their math facts. I hope that makes sense. So you want to be touching your math facts in multiple ways. You can do it with flashcards, you can do it with number lines, you can do it with writing math fac families. I didn't bring any manipulatives in here with me, but you can do it with M&Ms or Cheerios. You can be combining chairs, pillows, Legos, um, cut logs in the backyard. You can, math is everywhere. If there are three tiles on the kitchen floor this way and there are 12 tiles on the kitchen floor that way, how many tiles cover the floor? You can expand it to older kids. Well, if I was going to paint this area, how much paint would I need? Or what size of a piece of carpet would I need? What if I just wanted to build a fence around this area? All these things expand. Um, the other thing, another cool thing I got from another mom, I have no idea where she got these, but they are, num they're days, uh, what day of the school year are we? So here's a card for the first day of the school year. And on one side, it has a cute little story. And on the other side, it has math facts for one. And then it gives you some ideas of things that you can do on the first day of school. And this kit has all the way up to 100 days of school where the math facts on the card always build on the number of the day of school that we're doing this year. And I, I loved these and I wasn't consistent with them. So I'm actually going to reintroduce them this year because they're fun and I still have little guys in the house. So that's, so there's all kinds of additional activities that you can get. I'm not a big proponent on spending a lot of money on homeschooling. I think curriculum is beautiful and wonderful and it's a huge temptation. It's a huge temptation because somebody somewhere is telling me what's best for my child. When if I honestly take an inventory of my kids, I know what they need. I know they need their math facts. I have my 11 year old right now has an engineering type mind. He's consistently and totally designing and building and creating. My helper down here just spilled one of the games I wanna show you. Um, he's constantly building and creating. So for him, he's going to need a lot more than his math facts. He has one of those engineering type minds and I, at the same time, we talk about this all the time, it's math facts first, and then it's all those fun engineering type mathematical things that you're gonna need later. Um, are you with me? The next layer of things that you can do with teaching math facts, working with math daily, is take advantage of opportunities that you have within your house. Cook from recipes, um, double, triple, quadruple recipes, um, I have a large family, so I double and triple recipes all the time. 
and I often will freeze half of it so that I have another meal ready on a rainy day or a day where the kids are sick or something. And the kids help me with that all the time. We get out the whiteboard and we say, okay, one and a half cups of this, what if we triple the recipe? How much do we need now? And they work it out right on the whiteboard. They work together. Sometimes we have contests, but we work out all the mathematical um, ingredients first on a board, and then we actually cook the recipe. Um, another idea for teaching math and math facts is actually to use games. Wow, you're like, everything's falling today. There's all kinds of games out there. I pill pillaged right now from my cupboard. Can you hand that to me, kiddo? Everybody seems to have a smart device, so like I said, there's apps out there. There's these kinds of things, like Turbo Twist Math, where you, it's loud and it bothers me, but you can turn it and it'll say, hey, smart stuff, and then you can add or subtract and slap and twist, and the kids like that. Um, I don't like it because it makes a lot of noise, but the kids do like that. Um, there are other types of things. This is a puzzle. And this is good for younger reader or younger math guys, where it has a number on one side, and then it has a representation of the number on another, and the kids kind of play like memory, where they're matching the number to the, the grouping. So there's all kinds of stuff like that out there. What else do we got down here, helper? Can you sit up a second? There are, math is not just about knowing your math facts, and another thing that parents sometimes forget to concentrate on or is just the development of logic. And so there's games like Othello or Tic-Tac-Toe or Connect, Connect Four, those types of games. My kids love this one, Othello. That's a math patterning game. This is a great game. Oh, it makes a lot of noise. This one, Sequence, is a really great game that uses um, poker chips and it has a board where you use playing cards, and then everybody plays. It's kind of like a, um, a version of a tic-tac-toe, where it has a board of all the different faced cards, and the kids have to get five in a row on them. And this is a, a game of number recognition, strategy, um, and just good, you know, good team work, whatever it's called, team cooperation. Um, it's a good game that my kids can play regardless of whether they are young or old, and it's kind of a fun strategy game. And then the last one that I want to show you today as far as games is good old Yahtzee. Now, not only do I have Yahtzee, but I forgot to grab them, I have a whole bag of dice. And dice are awesome for math facts because you can simply roll the dice and add. You can simply roll the dice again and multiply. You can simply roll the dice again, set this down, and you can add and then multiply. And you, can, as the older your kids get, the more dice you can throw in. But the cool thing is that they also make dice that have the multiplication symbol, the division symbol, the addition, subtraction, equal sign symbol, and you can honestly forever work on your math facts with dice. And one more, um, I know I already said one more, but I'll wrap it up with this one. Another um, fun thing that you can do with counting and adding and multiplication is using real money. If you take a big bag of coins and you dump them on the table and you have the kids add up the money, um, they can be using simple addition, they can be using multiplication, you know, they have 15 nickels, um, how much is that, plus this many dimes, plus this many quarters, how much money is that. You can make a store in your house where um, you use real money and you play store and you give back change and you count back change. Um, that life has so much math wrapped up into it. Whether you're building a fort in the backyard, um, whether you want to build a fort in the backyard, and now you have to establish a budget and then you need to go to the store and you need to go shopping and you need to stay within your budget and you need to give the clerk the proper amount of money and make sure that they give you back the proper amount of change. You need to be able to measure and cut, you know, measure twice, cut once. You need to be able to um, read a recipe 
and not panic about one teaspoon when you need to make a quadruple batch of something. Um, if you are buying a car, you might want to estimate how much money you need to save over a period of time. Math is everywhere. And there's a couple hang-ups when it comes to teaching math. One of them, the biggest one, is that most of us don't like math. Um, we had negative experiences learning math as w when we were kids, and we feel inept. We don't feel qualified in order to be able to teach our kids math. The problem is, is it's the curriculum, the being strapped to curriculum that makes us feel that way. And we don't need to be strapped to curriculum. We need to look at our kids and know that we can teach them we can teach them to add, we can teach them to subtract, we can teach them to multiply, to divide, to use a ruler, to make a, to make a cake, um, to plant flowers, or um, to plan out a garden. Those are very practical, real ways that math, that we can introduce our kids to math. Now, some of us, like me, eventually will bump into a wall with one or all of our kids. What I mean by that is when um, my second son reached about fifth grade, um, every time we sat down to do math, I would make him cry and he would make me frustrated. And the reason that I discovered was is that I'm a very visual person. That's why I'm making you a video right now. And I need to see it in order to understand. Well, he doesn't need to see it to understand. He needs to hear it to understand. And the best thing that I did for him was find him a math tutor, a math teacher, that was able to bridge that gap for him. And honestly, he's been taking math classes since sixth grade, and he's now flourishing and doing brilliantly in math. So it is okay, once you've gotten past your fundamentals, to actually find help from uh, your husband or your wife or your mom or your dad or siblings um, or friends or coaches or tutors. Um, once you hit a wall and you realize that math is not just a basic need, but it's also built into what your kids love, then you do need to find additional resources in order to help them. And as you already know, there's thousands of math curriculums out there, but curriculum is not the answer. A curriculum is a tool that helps you equip your child. So anyway, I want to thank um, Holy Spirit-led homeschooling out on Facebook this morning for giving me the inspiration to actually make this video. Um, I know that I'm not the only mom that has struggled with these things over the years, and my oldest son would tell you that he was my guinea pig, and that honestly, the first few years of homeschooling, um, I didn't know any better, so I was trying to cram curriculum down his throat and neglecting the fundamentals, which is basically like trying to teach an eight-year-old how to read, but they only know about 11 of the letters of the English alphabet. It's as fun and it's as successful as that. So anyway, I hope this helps you. I hope that you embrace math and that you ask the Lord and ask other people around you to be able to see mathematics in a new way so that you don't carry over any negative attitudes or any negative feelings over into your kids as you teach math. Don't make the mistakes that I've done by saying, oh, I'm not good at this. I don't, I don't do word problems. I don't understand how this works. Instead, we need to change our language and say things like, wow, this is exercise for our brain today. Obviously, there's a solution. Let's dig in and find it. That's way different than saying, oh, I don't get it, and this is frustrating. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps. I hope you're enjoying homeschooling your kids and preparing for the new year ahead of you. Um, if you've liked this video, I'd, I'd love to ask you to click like and maybe even subscribe down here on my YouTube page. I'm in the process of continuing to make more videos to encourage you. This one's long. This one's going to end up being about 25, 25 and a half minutes. Um, but it's a huge area of concern at, at for homeschoolers that I'm bumping into and talking to. So I hope this helped. I hope you have a wonderful time with your kids. Make sure you hug them. Make sure that you enjoy the time that you have learning together because it goes really, really quickly. You can also find me at um, abetterwaytohomeschool.com and I look forward to talking with you soon. Have a wonderful day.